fourth game in the 1992 World Cup. This game between West Indies and Pakistan at the MCG, already the first two games decided New Zealand beating Australia conclusively in Auckland on the Saturday, the first day of the Cup, and then England coming out on top of India in a day-night match in Perth. Here at the MCG, the two teams, the West Indies first of all led by Richie Richardson, Desmond Haynes, Brian Lara and Richardson himself, then Hooper, Logie, Arthurton, Harper, Marshall, Ambrose, Benjamin and David Williams with Patrick Patterson as the 12th man. Now Pakistan have a problem. Imran Khan, the skipper, has a shoulder injury. He's decided it's better to rest it for this game with uh, a lot of cricket coming up. And Javed Miandad will lead. Then there's Ramiz Raja and uh, Amir Solhe. Then Inzamam, Javed himself, Salim Malik, Ijaz Ahmed, Wazim Akram, that great all-rounder, a wonderful player. Wazim Haider, Iqbal Sakanda, Moen Khan, Akib Javed. And the 12th man is Mushtaq Ahmed. Richie Richardson won the toss. Tony Gregg reported the pitch was in excellent condition, looked a real batsman's paradise, and the outfield would play very fast indeed. It is close cut. We join play now in the second over, three runs on the board. Kirtley Ambrose is the bowler, and he's coming into bowl to Rummy's Roger. The first voice you hear will be that of Tony Cozier. And it's good morning to David Gore. Good morning all, and Kirtley Ambrose straight past the outside edge there, Rummy's Roger's bat. Uh, following on from the opening over from Malcolm Marshall, a nice polished over, three runs off it. Ambrose now the taller of the two. Slightly widest delivery, let's be fair, Ramiz Raja won't be very happy having followed that one so wide. That's a good shot. Long chase here for Harper, but I don't think he'll get there. All those long strides just pull it back. And a great return. Roger Harper coming back into the West Indies team and immediately making an impact. Roger Harper has been well renowned for a long, long time as one of the world's great fielders. Uh, over six foot tall there, those legs do move very quickly and uh, he made a lot of ground there. Saving one run for the West Indies, classic throw. And there, Ramiz Raja's World Cup statistics. An average of 51, he won't be unhappy at all if he averages the same or better in this competition and again the same sort of strike rate he's always been uh, a dasher as an opening batsman and the highest score there 113 against England and that's a beautifully picked up shot off the legs for a boundary the first one of the innings Well, that's the first chance, really, that either batsman has had to put bat on ball. Beautifully timed. He's just flicked it off his legs there. Malcolm Marshall straying slightly down the leg side. Leg side. There he goes from leg stump, safely over the infield, and very quickly down to the boundary. Oh, good shot. Straight back down the pitch. He'll probably roll into the fence. No, it won't. Probably run for though. That's well done. Good straight hit. I don't know what uh, I mean, Raju was doing there. I think his thigh pad might have come loose as he was running. He was uh, not running flat out as we see Kirtley just get a finger on that. And uh, if you watch Ramiz Raja here as he's running, I think about the third and the fourth run. He starts grabbing at the, uh, there he is, in fact, in the first run, he's grabbing at the thigh pad. In the air and into the gap. That's running away down towards the boundary at extra cover, slowing up as it gets towards the rope down there, and into the rope it goes. There's that area down there is roped off because there's some new grass being put in grass down there affected by all the building works that have been going on and the Pakistanis yeah very very happy yes he looks a pretty fair uh, player first time I've seen Amir Sohail certainly not uh, bothered by the pace bowlers he's uh, he hasn't taken a backward step and uh, a couple of occasions when he's seen one there that he's like the look of he knows what to do with the bat
And that's a good shot all the way along the ground, through the gap at mid-wicket, running away towards the boundary. This will get the boundary too. Yes, four more. The Pakistan is beginning to cut loose here at the MCG. Lovely shot there from Amir Sahail. Tell you what, uh, Wright, he wouldn't have dispatched that one any better. John Wright of New Zealand, a very good player through the onside, and uh, I guess that most left-handers like them there. But uh, he's really starting to come out of his shell, Sahail. Winston Benjamin is coming into the back. Good pitch, yeah, fast outfield. So Hale back for the second. This could be out. Oh, bad throw. Umpire Randall says not out. The throw was very wide, brilliantly picked up by Williams. There was nothing much he could do about that. It was wide. It was on the half volley. He gathered it, but he had to bring it back a long way. Ambrose is... Uh very, very athletic, as I said, and a, and a good throw there would have had uh, Sahail. It's straight up in the air. Who's going to take it? Logie's got him. That's the first wicket to fall. Sohail out court, trying to pull that one to mid-wicket. Really trying to get Pakistan off to a flyer. Not a bad start anyhow. He didn't middle it. Straight up in the air. And little Gus Logie did the rest. Yes, so he's an impressive character, Amir Sohail. And he was certainly showing uh, some good form there in the end. Gus Logie taking that catch comfortably. Winston Benjamin gets the first breakthrough. Pakistan 1 for 45. The new batsman is M. Zaman Huck. So Harper starts his second over, just short of Logie, and through him, he really is having a, a disastrous time out there today with the ball eluding him to his left and his right and a few fumbles. Gus Logie, as we know, one of the truly outstanding fielders in the game. Not today. Carl Hooper, he'll be in tandem with Roger Harper. long chase out here for Keith Arthur and he's very quick over the outfield usually has a good strong throw but the West Indies seem to be playing with a bar of soap in the outfield today it's uh, eluding them more often than not and he had difficulty in grabbing it but it was always three Hooper just straying a little wide of the off stump there giving the batsman room to cut and the wide open spaces of the MCG there giving Arthur in a long long chase it's very important that the Pakistan batsman with their run rate and 30 over stage. He tries that and does get over the short mid wicket. There's a sweeper out there. Two more. And they'd be aware with nine wickets in hand, the 30 over stage, you have to be consistent with your run rate. You see there's a few gaps there, the maidens and ones and twos. Probably not good enough now. To, they're just going away from about 24 down and just 15 down again. It's with their run rate. In the air, that's out. Oh, that's the end of it, beaten by the change of pace there. He threw it up, a little bit of drift. It was straight to Carl Hooper, Inzeman's out. And that's a wicket the West Indies needed. You're very welcome, not only to uh, Gucci Richards and the skipper, but also to Roger Harper. It's quite a straightforward catch. Carl Hooper. Pakistan now 2 for 97 in the 30. Javed Meandad, the acting captain for Pakistan today, a tremendous record, one of the world's best batsmen in all types of cricket. Comes to the crease with the ball of the second wicket. It's good running. He has an experienced player in with him out there, Ramesh Raja. But Javed is. Uh, a great chatterer out in the centre, but he's a very busy player and a wonderful player. Wonderful player to get this, the whole thing moving. It's just wide of Williams, and it'll be four runs. Frustration there for Malcolm Marshall. That was a genuine nick. Robert me and Dad always plays the full-blooded shot when he has a go at it. A lot of bat on it, and even though it was a thick edge. David 
Williams really threw himself, but it really was more like a second slip catch. Half century to Ramiz Raja. He's been the rock of the innings so far. He's just not had the opportunities today to, to really put back to ball. Very few chances to, to reach the boundary. But at least 71 not out, he's still doing a fair job for Pakistan. Good shot into the gap. Very well placed, and that's going to race into the fence. A beautiful shot. Just a bit short, that delivery from Benjamin. the sixth four of the innings this is where Javid me and dad is so good very good improviser with a cricket bat giving himself just a little bit of room there Winston Benjamin dropping it slightly short but he's timed that shot so nicely so beautifully it's gone just wide of the fielder and beaten the sweeper who's already 20 30 meters in from the boundary and there it goes down to the fence oh that's out no it's not Looked as if it nicked something and it's gone for four, four runs. That went flying away and Javid now having another chat with the... Uh, for me, he's down there, big smile on Javid's his face. Javid's loving that. He, <laughs> whatever he said before, it had no, no effect whatsoever. Rami's getting in a fearful tangle with that. He seemed to have made up his mind early on that he wanted to try and pull this ball through mid-wicket and <laughs> all sorts of... Wrong positions. Confused David Williams as well. Just out, just missed the outstretched hands. And it still counts as four runs. Doesn't matter how beautiful it was, it's four runs. So there we are. Everything quite consistent until the last over. Well, with the, the quest for runs in these closing stages of the Pakistan Indians, they need a couple more overs like that to set the West Indies a reasonable target. Beautifully hit down the ground. Will it get to the boundary? Yes, a magnificent shot. And he's getting that one right off the meat of the bat. Straight down the ground for four. That's the end of the over. Two for 196. Two overs to go. Malcolm Marshall about to start the second last over. Fieldsman spread far and wide. Oh, this is a huge ground, not all of them on the boundary. Oh, he's got that away too. What a good shot that is. That ball would have hit, I reckon, around about off stump. Jarvid right across, knowing, as David Gower has pointed out, that he had to get it away fine on the leg side, and he did it perfectly. This is always the risk, of course. And the ball there, Malcolm Marshall, just too full, trying to get the ball in the block hole. Straight, just marginally onto leg stump, but Jarvid's moved across, he's created the space. And it doesn't take long the ball to reach the boundary at fine leg they're just in front of the sudden stand the wide open space has been used to full extent by the Pakistani batsman so there it is his strike rate 89 runs per 100 balls he's on 49 and he's now got 50 well played job at Miandad captaining Pakistan because Imran Khan has problems with his shoulders and he certainly lifted the run rate it's a great little captain's innings from Javed Meandad there. Ramis Raja is part of the other end, has struggled to keep the run rate up for Pakistan, but Javed's come in there, he's played his shots, he's improvised, he's made the most of it, he's used the pace of the ball, and he's, uh, he's got his runs quickly. That's his 41st half century in one-day internationals. That's a great shot, magnificent shot through extra cover, running down towards the boundary, into the fence she goes. What a magnificent shot. This is a little gem of an innings. And the Pakistanis are all out of their seats. Well, it's Ramiz Raja now joining in the act. He's seen his captain put back to ball. And this has split the field perfectly through extra cover there. Kept his head down. Full follow through of the bat. A little flick again. He's done it again. Magnificent shot. A little flick down a fine leg. Isn't he cheeky? Two for 212. 
This is the last over. Ambrose is going to bowl it. He's not easy to get away. I reckon uh, the best thing to do here would be for Ramiz to try and get a single and let Jarvid do the work. That's exactly what they've done. Just have a look at the shot from Jarvid Meandad. The last ball of Marshall's over. Now he got it away to fine leg. This is an incredible shot. You can see how wide of off stump the ball is there. It's a foot wide of the off stump. The perfect place for Malcolm Marshall there. He can't really blame himself, but Jarvid beautifully timed. Gets right across and works it to long leg. He's trying to get that one away fine too, but a bit of bounce there, and I think it was the slower ball too. Well, Kirtley Ambrose... Perhaps not quite as easy as Malcolm Marshall to get away there. Again, Jarvis gone to the offside. But the ball's bounced up. He's got a bit of body in the way of that as well. Well, I mean, he's Raja on strike and on 99. That's his 100, his sixth century. A little slow, I think, when one considers the batting they've got. He's happy about it. Whether or not he scored those runs quickly enough to get his side a victory time will tell well at least he can be proud of the hundreds he struggled for some of that innings to, to find his touch to find his timing and only at the end of the day will we know how how valuable this is this, is, this has been anyway 100 is never a bad effort in one day cricket the strike rate of 64.3 is consistent with most of his career and uh, it just remains to be seen now how uh, how many more runs they can just nudge off the rest of this over of Kirtley Ambrose. And that was the first hundred against the West Indies in a World Cup match. He's hit that off the middle of the bat. He wants one. There's going to be a run out. No, it's not. <laughs> Getting themselves in a terrible tangle. Williams couldn't quite get to the stumps in time. The ball missed the stumps. He would have been run out by miles. I have to say there was no danger on today's ball with that ball hitting the stumps anyway. So, uh, <laughs> Pakistan... <laughs> Jarvid comfortably back in again. Not a problem there. West Indies have been a bit sloppy in the field. Oh, he's got back, he's gone. He's hit it straight to backward point. No ball called. Well, I think Jarvid was a little unlucky. We normally see Ambrose smiling, but that's not a smile. I don't think that one was over the top of shoulders in a, over his shoulders in a normal standing position. Let's have another look. Jarvid's certainly smiling. He's loving that. It's, it's a close decision, that one. Very close decision. He's uh, only managed to get it, cut it back just behind square there. And uh, Kirtley Ambrose showing signs of severe confusion. Two balls to go. Got the way on the onside to get two here as well. They might try and test him for the third, in which case... Uh, they could get overthrows. They're settling for two. Yes, uh, the interesting thing about that particular playing condition is that if the ball is in that area, I mean, really, Java did have a fair shot at it. I think it's a little silly, but over his head it would be a bit different. But over his shoulders, it's a fair shot. He hit it straight to Fieldsman. Um, he could have hit it over his head. The bowlers very angry about situations like that and I think with some justification too so this is the last ball and he comes it's a slow one down the leg side is it wide no it's not Jarvid was way outside off stump and on his knees yes he'll have to settle for that well what a little gem of an innings from Jarvid Meandad he's actually helped the Pakistan side lift their total because at one stage they looked as if they weren't going to get nearly enough runs. I've ever seen in all the years I've been watching cricket, Javed, me and Dad, he pulled that innings around and he never stopped giving cheek out there, never stopped chatting to the opposition and frustrating them. This is the way they finished up Pakistan after looking at one stage as though they would be lucky to get to 200. Javed me and add 57 from 61 balls faced. Ramiz Raja reached his 100, 102 from 158 
and it was a good effort, two for 220, and the bowling figures for West Indies, they certainly weren't aided in the field. The fielding, I thought, was very sloppy indeed. Marshall, 53 from 10 overs, and Ambrose, 40 from 10, the two experienced players. And Winston Benjamin, 10 overs, one for 49. Carl Hooper, none for 41. And Roger Harper, one for 33. Those two spinners did an, e an excellent job for uh, Richie Richardson and thoroughly justified their choice in the side. So it's uh, not an easy task for the West Indies, even though it looks as though it's going to be a low-scoring game. Here they are making their first attempt at it. Oh, well, bold, a magnificent delivery, that one. All over the place, Haynes. Didn't know where it was. It's one of those moments when you're glad you're in the commentary box because Wasa Macklem is very, very sharp. He can swing it back into the right hand. He goes wide and it pitches and it holds its line and then he cuts him in half. Beautifully bold, just sheer pace. Lucky job it. Right arm over the wicket to the left-hander. Haynes has the top one. He's out there at the moment. 148. And that was a magnificent shot by Lara through mid-wicket. Yes, Brian Lara has that touch of class. He's a very wristy, flashy batsman, but when he times the ball, it really does come off the meat of the bat. He really likes to work it on the onside if it's round about middle and off stump. And he whipped that away, and that was beautifully placed and timed. It was always going to be for a delightful stroke. Yes, they've got off to a pretty good start here, considering the total they're chasing. All right, required is still 4.48, but they're not falling behind. They're not building up over five, and that's very important. Yes, I think uh, if they can just keep it ticking over at this pace without losing wickets, they'll be in business. In the air, what a good shot that was. Not very short. Back onto his back foot. Whack over the top of Midwicket's head. And thud into the fence down there. Nine runs off the over. Beautiful shot, Brian Lara. No wicket for 36. Brian Lara, the magnificent, I suppose you'd call it. Well, I was thinking pull shot, but it really uh, wasn't quite a pull shot. Whatever name you want to put on it, it was very well timed. It does get off the ground. And we have a, a change in bowling here. We have Wazem Haider. Just short. Rather loose shot from Brian Lara. Almost carried to the mid-off fielder. Yes, he hit that pretty well. Brian Lara. But uh, hitting it on the rise, he got it in the air and mid-off probably could have done a little bit more. Didn't really move towards the ball. Jarvid now going back a little in the, uh, he was in the short cover position, he's going back now to a traditional cover position. He's got it through, that'll be four, lovely shot from Lara. That's his fourth boundary, and he's been the one responsible for the West Indies acceleration. Really is a beautiful timer of the ball, Brian Lara doesn't have to uh, play too many reckless shots. He's got so many good ones that he can play without, uh, without any danger. He doesn't have to play uh, reckless shots or risky shots. Oh, that's a fine shot. Another four for Lara. That's his fifth. That's why he doesn't have to play risky shots really is a beautiful time of the ball and he's quite a joy to watch not quite as stylish as uh, Sachin Tendulkar he's certainly got the timing of Tendulkar perhaps not quite the skill but uh, he is a very talented young player He's cracked it away. It was just short, and he pulled it through the mid wicket area for another four. That's his sixth, and that raises the West Indies 50. 
Alex, this is a pretty tough uh, initiation for Wasim Haider, playing in his first international. So another change, Ijaz Ahmed, left arm medium pacer. Somebody in the air, there was a shot of catch it. But it was wide of the fielder, who is not happy. Just indicating to his captain that if he had been at backward square leg rather than forward, the ball would have dropped straight into his lap. There was some discussion as to where he should have been. Might be a little harder for the left-hand bowler to bowl to the left-hand batsman. Oh, magnificent stroke. That's the best we've seen so far from Lara. He really hammered it away. That really was a magnificent shot. So the West Indies moving along very smoothly here. Left arm spin from the northern end and a drop chance. Evidence of turn there at the southern end. Desi Haynes' push forward is the thickest edge that's diverted enough to miss Moen Khan's gloves. And that's a lovely stroke as well. He's a master of the sweep shot, Desmond Haynes, and many other shots as well. First of all, the crashing stroke away past square leg, and then that delicate little stroke that just helped it on its way very fine. 100 partnership the West Indies They're all looking very very comfortable in their pursuit of 221 to win Iqbal Sikandov coming in now the leg spinner from the southern end <laughs> and Brian Lara has reached his half century a lovely knock Greg Chappell will expand on that and in a moment with him will be Tony Gray Yes Richie it's been a very impressive performance here by Brian Lara struggled a bit during the World Series Cup early in the summer Coming out as an opening batsman today, 50 runs, including 7 fours, 63 balls, so a very good strike rate of 79.4. Oops, catch it was the call, but it went popping over the keeper's shoulder there. Mohan Khan, to watch it go, it was uh, all too quick for him. A bit of hard work there for the keeper. It was from the, the bat onto the glove and over the keeper's head. He had no chance being down and up to the stumps. A difficult chance in the last over from Sahail. Thick outside edge. Well, that's going straight up in the air. This will be caught by the bowler himself. Yes, he's got... Oh, he's dropped it! And what's more, that Haynes is 50. Well, he's just blessed himself. It went straight up in the air, and unfortunately for the bowler, the mid-off was a little far back, so he had to go running backwards. Here it is again. Have a look. Desmond Haynes trying the little flick away on the leg side. He had it in the hand, then tried to almost bring it in and threw it on the ground. He'd like to throw himself on the ground, and Desi Haynes... Ryan Lara. That's a full toss. Down the ground he goes, and it's going to beat the fielder too. So that's his eighth boundary, right off the meat of the bat. It's a full toss, but uh, he placed it well. His timing has been impeccable. His placement very good today. Anyone at this level should be able to handle the full toss. There's shouts of catch it, but it's gone well over the head of the man at midwicket. In fact, it is beautifully placed. He's gone down the track to it. He's hit it right off the meat of the bat. And has quite deliberately hit it over the head of the infielder. And he split the two men out on the boundary. Yes, he gives the ball a real flick with the wrists. Just at the last minute, he gets a lot of his power from that uh, wrist work. Beautiful wrist work there. Now then, Wazim Akram has been brought back into the attack. 
The ball to Lara. What a good shot that is. That's, uh, we've seen plenty of examples of Brian Lara's great timing. But that was just a little uh, swat. Almost like uh, swatting flies. It's a wonderful, a wonderful improvisation. Desmond Haynes is not going to be phased by Wazi Makram dropping it short. But it gives you an idea of the pace at which um, Wazi Makram is bowling, that Haynes was looking for the pull shot just in front of square or even just behind, and all he could do was get it away over mid-on. Actually, a safer pull shot off the left arm over the wicket bowler. Once you start trying to pull him around a square leg, that's when you're likely to get the top edge and get caught somewhere. But if you're hitting it over mid-on, especially if you're uh, up against someone quick like that and you haven't got time to roll the wrist, it's a lot safer. Timing, timing. Once again... No great effort put into that stroke by Brian Lara, but it fairly raced off the bat. Picked up two runs just from a, a little defensive push. That's a very good shot. No great uh, piece of fielding attached to the total amount of cricket, and they will run four. Disappointment all round, and it's none for 175. Boots or shoes, that's where it's hit right on the toe. He's too slow getting the back down, bat down, that was how quick it was. The worst part about those is that... Uh... They're at their absolute best about one second after the ball's hit you on the toe because they don't hurt anywhere near as much as they do about five seconds after they've hit. The way it hit his toe, I reckon there could easily be something quite serious there. I think it might have been better with the boot on. At least for walking off the ground. Richie Richardson passed Brian Lara on the way out, had um, one or two consoling words for him. Got it through, just the deflection from the diving fielder at extra cover, but it's gone all the way for four. Had a lot of wood on it. Now we've got another statistic. It's the highest score at the MCG by any team without losing a wicket for the first wicket. Good deflection. That's a good boundary by Haynes. Very similar to the leg glances we saw from Javed Miandad during the Pakistan innings. Very fine deflection for four. Just made it. Well, that's well run by Desi Haynes there. Slight misfield at mid-wicket. They decided to come back for the second, but a good throw came in there over the top of the stumps. There's the misfield. And here's the throw. 
nicely in. And Desi Haynes comfortably back. With uh, that uh, fearful blow on the toe, which he got from Wazim Akram, forced him to retire hurt. That's beautifully placed and timed. Not so well fielded. Desmond Haynes demonstrating exactly how he has got over 7,600 one-day international runs. A little bit of a stiff bat there at uh, mid-off, and it's uh, he's Raja there. Lovely on drive for four. Right up there in the slot for it. And the West Indies moving very comf comfortably towards their victory. Well, Akib Javid gave Richardson the sight of the ball before. Again, angled in, just fractionally straighter this time. Richardson makes room for the shot, gets his feet out of the way, the back comes through, beautifully timed, and past the man at mid-on. Let's put that away as well. It won't go all the way this time. So three more. Square leg signals the no ball. And Akib Javid just taking the opportunity here, knowing that there's no way Pakistan can get back into this match. Let uh, one or two frustrations loose. Well, there's nothing to lose. And Richard Richardson there, he's seen it all before. He's not too fussed about that, just swayed out of the way of this quite a good bouncer, a reasonably straight bouncer that Akib Jarba has managed to drag out of the MCG pitch. One needed for the West Indies' first win of this competition. So two no balls, two bouncers finishing the game. And the West Indies have won sweepingly by ten wickets even though they have lost Brian Lara, who had to retire hurt with that injury. They didn't lose an actual wicket. Desmond Haynes carries his bat and emphasizes his quality as an all-round opening batsman, leading run scorer in One Day Internationals, and he walks off the field. Not out 93 performance from the West Indian batsman. Bad luck for Brian Lara with that foot injury, but uh, Desmond Haynes and Richie Richardson took them to a very, very comfortable victory. This is the way it looked at the end. They made naught for 221, with Brian Lara retiring hurt for 88. It was a great innings from him. First time he's been up there opening, and his highest score in limited overs internationals made those 88 from 101 balls. Desmond Haynes 144, and Richie Richardson 40 in the Pakistan bowling. Nothing in the wickets column for them, and plenty of runs taken from them. Wazi Makram was the most impressive. Well, waiting down the presentation area now is Tony Gregg, and he has with him the two skippers, but no player of the match. Thank you, Richie. Well, uh, I've got $5,000 down here, and uh, I have another Richie with me, Richie Richardson. Congratulations. $3,000, the winner's check for that uh, World Cup victory, and uh, a very good victory it was, too. Yeah, it was, it was a very good start for us. So it's nice to see that we've um, been through a match without losing a wicket, and I hope that we can continue in that vein. Yes, it looked as if uh, when the West Indian side came out there today that uh, they'd either had a really heavy pep talk from the captain or somebody or uh, they'd gone back to the West Indies and uh, sat down and done some thinking. Well, we're definitely here for business this time, so we're not going to waste any time, we're not going to muck about it. We're going to get into business and try to win the cup. Well, now, Brian Lara has been made uh, the man of the match and unfortunately he's not able to be uh, with us up here. How is he? Well, it's difficult for me to say because I passed him on the way when I was going out. Um, I think um, his nail is pushed back a little bit, so I hope that he'll be ready for the next match. Right, well, I would be very grateful if you'd give him this uh, World Cup, uh, Benson Edges World Cup uh, gold medallion, as well as uh, $500 for his effort today. Thank you very much indeed. Right, well, Javid Meander has been good enough to come down as well. 
Um, sorry about this, $1,500 for you. <laughs> um, not enough runs, really. Yeah, but I think at least, you know, we did well. We scored 220. We thought we can win the game because we played so many times in MCG. And I think we saw 220, 230 is a good score. But compared to this game, especially wicket was very good. And we didn't have the enough bowler. Yes, um, the bowling problem, if uh, Imran, how is he? I mean, if he doesn't get back into the side, there's definitely one problem there. And, of course, Waka Yunus has gone home. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I hope, you know, he'll be all right for the next game. Because he was a bit struggling for this game. So he just tried to get rest. He'll be all right for next few next games. Job for me and Dad. Well played yourself, but uh, bad luck in the game.